Hey folks, tonight I'm going to uh, review the movie Let the Right One In, which is a 2008 movie from Sweden, which is also, uh, its original title was Lat den Rate Koma In. There's Sweden. Um, it was directed by Thomas Alfredson and written by a John Lindquist, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce his middle name. Um, Lindquist wrote both the uh, the novel and the uh, screenplay, which is based on the novel. Um, it's a story about this 12-year-old this girl who's also like a 200-year-old vampire. Well, no, okay, the story is about like this, this kid. Um, his name is Oscar, and he's always getting picked on, and, and Ely moves next door into Oscar and become friends, and she encourages him to like stick up for himself, right? Um, on a side note, the guy who directed Cloverfield, which his name was Matt Reeves, is going to direct the, uh, American version, remake. Um, on a positive note about remakes, more people get to know the story. On the negative note, it's a remake. I mean, come on, um, there's that Korean movie, um, Young Wa Hungry On, uh, or A Tale of Two Sisters, which is a Korean movie. It's so good. But then the Americans decided to remake it and call it The Uninvited, which is very meh. Um, okay, uh, but, you know, the, ex uh, the exception to the rule, which is The Departed versus The Infernal Affairs, The Departed was so much better. But, of course, you have Scorsese at the helm, so, you know, you can't do any better than Scorsese. Anyways, back to Let the Right One In. If you want to watch a very cool scene, it has it's no spoilers, it's very spoiler-free. It is close to the end of the movie, but go to YouTube, type in the, excuse me, the pool scene. Watch it. It's amazing. It is, it is amazing. It's a, such a great scene. That's all. I'm going to say, it, it was just good. There's also so many other scenes like um, Eli's, or Eli's human attempt to get blood for her, or, or the cat scene with the woman that Eli attacks. I mean, the whole movie is just so intense. I have to find this book and read it now, because seriously, it has to be like a hundred times better, because the book is always better, and I can't wait to read this thing. Um, the movie isn't like a jump out and scare you kind of movie. It... it builds tension. It, it's all about what's going to happen to the main characters. It, is Oscar ever going to stand up for himself? When he does, what what's going to be the consequences? I mean, what about Ely? Is she ever going to be found out sooner or later? Or where'd she come from? Where's she going? This movie is only the tiniest bit of the story. I mean, the biggest impact of this movie had on me, that vampire and humans can coexist, can have a relationship. Not that Edward and, and Bella bullshit, romance, blah. I mean, I'm talking about a true friendship. I mean, Ely's previous human. I've got to wonder, if he was ever a little kid, or, or how they get together. Again, with the backstory, i got to find the book. Got to read it. You just, this movie is so amazing. Find it, watch it, get it off of Netflix, watch this movie. I mean... Look, if I haven't been perfectly clear, I dig this movie. I mean, I really dig this movie. So many vampire movies focus on the whole vampire versus human thing. But, and don't get me wrong, I am so still pro-human. But, you know what? This movie made me think. I mean, you got these two kids who... Who are just looking for someone to be friends with, and and then they find each other, and it's kind of like this, this star-crossed lovers, but not. And it didn't feel like it was a worn-out plot device. It just felt, it felt real, you know, it touching. Well, anyways, that's that's all I got for now. So um, until next time.